Today, the eyes and ears of the 21st century are focused on new developments, new technologies, new emerging companies. We're on the scene to bring it to you as it happens. We anchor from our new studios in Los Angeles and then go out all over America to get to the heart of the story. I'm Bert Tenzer. I'm Bella Shaw. I'm Doug Llewellyn. I'm William Shatner, and this is Heartbeat of America. Our show focuses on corporate America, its stories, its drama, its breakthroughs. We'll be going out today to report on an organization that is impacting our lives and shaping our future, an organization that truly is the heartbeat of America. In the 20th century, a group of future Americans led by William Shatner ventured out into the universe. The challenge? To take the American spirit and courage to the final frontier of man, outer space. It was an exciting time on television, but it was only a fantasy. It's the challenge to unite America and to keep our economy and our country moving forward. This has inspired Heartbeat of America to launch a special series entitled Keeping America Strong. In the 20th century, William Shatner took us off on a voyage into the universe to experience what life is like on other planets. But now, here in the 21st century, he is back to explore what life is like right here on our own planet. This is all part of a series that we call Keeping America Strong. And part of Keeping America Strong is keeping corporate America's computing technologies operating at peak performance. But how do we do that when computer code has actually outgrown its capacity and executable programs are taking too long? Well, for that answer, we go to today's guests who should know because they are the originators of supercomputer compatible cluster computing on the Mac. They have six years of experience writing high performance computing code and harnessing the power of clusters. Their award winning work is taking companies to a whole new level and we're about to find out exactly what this is all about. They are from a company known as Dowger Research, which is headquartered in Huntington Beach, California. And specifically, this is a company that specializes in high performance scientific and cluster computing. And if you don't know what cluster computing is, you're just like me, and we're going to find out together. First on my left, I'd like you to meet the president of the company, Dr. Dean Dowger. Dr. Dowger, Thank welcome. You. And on his left is uh, Kevin Sinclair, who's the Vice President of Operations. Two computer geeks who seem like really <laughs> normal guys. Let me ask you, number one, why would a company or anyone want to make use of cluster computing? And in that answer, tell me what cluster computing is. Well, the idea of cluster computing is basically you take your individual computers, say your personal computers, and combine them together to be able to tackle a larger job that no one computer could do alone and to tackle that larger job faster or more efficiently than one computer could do alone. So in effect, you can take a bunch of small personal computers and by connecting them together, build a supercomputer. Yes, Is that that's right? right. And essentially your own personal supercomputer if you want. Right. One that you use just yourself or, you, or just with your group of friends or things like that. And what kind of problem does that solve? Well, I mean, there's a, a large span of problems that, that can be um, addressed. There's sort of two categories I, that I could, I could describe, say, in the uh, scientific or technical problems, very large calculations uh, for um, scientific problems, as well as, say, uh, digital video or digital special effects, uh, where you're dealing with um, large amounts of data that has to be processed for, like, just to be able to edit a program together like this, or for uh, putting together intro. Or for doing a techno you know, high tech yeah. movie special effects and things like yeah, that's that. That's right. Like Star Wars Episode 3. Exactly. Let's say. What are some other examples of how clustering computing can be, what can be used? Cluster computing can be used uh, certainly in a technical arena, sort of like in aerodynamics or thermodynamics problems, uh, problems they're solving for the space community. Um, could even be used in uh, applications such as just general number crunching. If you're looking at probability uh, statistics, uh, sort of those realms, we've seen customers use. Uh, Pooch uh, for applications such as that. Well, you just mentioned the name of the software. I should we should point out the product you've created is called Pooch. Yes, <laughs> I love the, the name. <laughs> the Pooch what, application. How did you come up with the name? Um, well, basically, it's well, an acronym, isn't it? Uh, yes, an acronym: Parallel Operation and Control Heuristic Application. And uh, <laughs> right over my head, <laughs> right over my head. Yeah. There it goes. Okay. The, the idea came about that you have the, the software is on existing on these nodes, and it it responds to commands. It responds to launching applications, taking files, responding to files, and and does it obediently, of course. Right. Yeah, I just want to clarify actually that 
when we reference a node, it's actually just an individual computer. It'd be like a desktop computer that somebody might have at, uh, you know, say your standard uh, company. Okay. And, you know, it'd be connecting those nodes or individual computers together to make your supercomputer or your cluster. One of the big advantages, I understand it, is that for or large organizations that have a lot of computers in their building, in their facilities, at nighttime, when everybody goes home, it really is possible to wire all these community laptops together, which isn't hard, by the way, and have these tremendous problems being solved overnight while other people aren't using the computers, right? That, yeah. Yeah, and that's the beauty of, of it because you have an underutilized resource that's going to sit idle for maybe 12 to, to 15 hours when, when your workforce isn't there. And you could have, say, a you know, person in your company that needs to solve a large problem and you don't have capital resources to fund a large supercomputer for your company. And so you can use these underutilized assets at night and you can actually perform those tasks that are just you know, monumental that you would need a supercomputer resource for on assets you already have. And it, it, it's, it's a winner for a company that you know, needs to utilize assets it already has and it, and it can bring sort of a new realm of uh, development for a company. We should point out, again, as we mentioned before, this really is, is dependent on the Mac system, the Macintosh computers. Why is, does it work better on the Mac than on, on PCs? Why, why have you built this for the Mac? Well, really, the, what the Macintosh platform provides is that each node is very consistent and very reliable in between each one of these machines. We know people who use, say, Intel-based hardware who run into problems because one piece of commodity hardware is like a network card is slightly different from any of the others. And so it takes a long time to be able to track these kinds of things down. We know people who are skilled in the industry who take two weeks to put these kinds of things together. But literally in minutes, I can put together a cluster of the same size uh, on the Mac platform using our Pooch software. And the Mac OS is very stable, and that's oh, one yes. of the reasons it makes it so effective. Yes, yes, very rock solid and, and very secure. This brings up another point where you have this asset that you wouldn't normally be using, and you also don't need a staff now to maintain that asset, where if you were to go out and buy a dedicated supercomputer-style cluster, you'd then have to have administrative staff to, to work the issues, to make sure that it's constantly running. So by using this, it's an incredibly stable platform, it's a tremendously stable program, and you're using an asset that you wouldn't normally be using otherwise. Give me some examples of where this is being used right now. I know it's being used in computer labs and on, on college campuses. Is that the primary area right now where it's had the most use and success? That's one of the primary, our primary markets is uh, the academic market, since of course that's where our background is and that's, right. where, that's where we got started. Right. And so, um, you want me to give you some examples? Of, sure. Yeah. Um, for example, at uh, Berry College in Georgia, he has, say, a few G G5 Macs um, in his office, a, a professor Todd Timberlake there, um, working on high energy particle physics. During the summers, um, he uses the iMacs that are in a neighboring computer lab when the undergraduates are not using it, for example. Uh, for, and I know people at, say, uh, UC uh, San Diego who um, he runs a program called P. Mr. Bayes, he, uh, Professor Holzenbeck over there, um, in the biology department, that works on the, uh, determines the evolutionary paths between different species based on their DNA. And so he's a, I mean, some remarkable. This is pretty sophisticated <laughs> right. stuff we're talking about, but, you know. There's some very interesting research there yeah. that he, he sees Pooch as the easiest way to be able to put together clusters. He, this UCSD professor promotes, helps for, sometimes promote this um, accidentally or intentionally, um, that uh, this is the easiest way to go to be able to, and the most effective and the most efficient, most economic way to go to be able to make use of that kind of computational hardware. And in order to put this into action, it simply is just plugging an Ethernet wire into the two computers and hooking them together that way? It, it would take no, it? no additional networking than what you would to have getting email to a machine or surfing the Internet. It's that no. simple. If the Is it also possible to hook up computers via the Internet? Oh, yes, yes. We've, uh, I, we've connected things, we've connected computers back to, say, UCLA, which is where this uh, right. project started, um, say, from Washington, D.C. or Toronto, Canada. My distance record is right now outside Munich, Germany, 6,000 miles away back to UCLA. So start trying to solve one problem, you, you've got computers here and computers on the other side of the world all working together. That's correct. Building, that's the cluster. Yeah. That's right. I mean, this sounds fantastic. Yeah. And, and again, I'm not in your arena on this, but you know what you're doing. Uh, what kind of reaction have you, have you been getting from people who are aware of what you're doing? Well, I mean, when they, sort, when they see the software in action, when they actually try it out and, or, or when they see a demonstration of it, let's say, their sort of eyes open up like, wow, you can actually do that. And 
you know, it, it's sort of in, in, an enabling and empowering type of, type of technology because people can say, I can actually do this. I don't have to go to some, to some like, large supercomputing center to be able to make use of these kinds of resources. I can just do it myself. And so this is the kind of thing that we want to encourage and, and help. I think part of that is the, the drag and drop, ease of use. It's, it's sort of that Apple friendly uh, notion wow. that, that you can really create your cluster uh, very easily. You know, and you, you can have people in their own homes that have a few machines that are they're doing supercomputing per se. And it, uh, it, it, it's easy it, and it's there. Well, it sounds great. We'll have a demonstration of this, but for the time being, it's a, obviously a very intriguing intriguing thing that you've come up with and uh, obviously it's great hearing about it. Thank you. Thank you.